Okay, it's one of these right here. Uh, there it is. It's this one right here. Wow. Yeah, this was uh, John Lennon, May Pang, one of the houses during the Lost Weekend was right here. I think this was the last place they stayed before Lennon went back to New York and got back with Yoko. This was when the debauchery was really going crazy. You know, the, the whole thing at the Troubadour with the code tags on his forehead and all that stuff with Harry Nielsen. I think he and May Pang spent the last couple weeks in LA right here at this house. Next stop, Blue Jay Way. Yeah. We're up here in the Bird Street, so. That's it, right here. Blue Jay Way. George Harrison spent like a week in August of 67 here. I think he got here August 1st, 67. And he got in, he was waiting for their publicist, Derek Taylor. And, and it was really foggy. It was really foggy and it took forever. And if you listen to Blue Jay Way, the song, it's Please Don't Be Long. He was waiting and waiting. He was really tired too, because he had flown all the way from you know, London with, with Patty Boyd. So The other thing that I think was interesting about this place is this is where uh, George Harrison, the first Beatle to meet Harry Nielsen, who like really loomed large in their L.A. Well, that, he was their favorite singer. Beatles said he they admired him the most. I think they he was their favorite drinking mate too. Yeah. So, uh, no, they got they were they hit they it off. Chemistry. Yeah. In John Lennon's case, in the last week, and they hit it off a little too well. Derek Taylor was, uh, you know, he's a really important piece of the picture too because Derek Taylor was uh, from the Liverpool area, but the Beatles didn't meet him until they came here to L.A. And then they became constant companions. He was also the Beach Boys publicist yeah. uh, at the time, too, and the Birds. So, and, and all those guys came together in L.A. and hung out, and it was because of Derek Taylor. Yeah. And more on him in a little bit at our next stop, which is going to be a really cool place, too. So, anyways, 1567 Blue Jay Way. Please don't be long. But the, but the views here in L.A., up here, it's just crazy, man. And you get this beautiful view and you're in a, no house is under 10 million bucks. And then there's this next door to you. Th this crap like this. It's, it's just crazy, man. Yeah, it's, man. And look, here's Frank oh, Lloyd Wright. Here's Frank Lloyd Wright house right here. Yeah. That's it, right here. Maybe it's right next to it. Pull over for a second. Yeah, we got to film this. Yeah, I'm going to. Oh, there it is. Well, no Beatles here, but you know what the hell, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll get back on the Beatles soon enough. Oh my God, it's so cool. And that's that's it right above us, right? That's it right there with all the palm trees. Uh, maybe, yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's Yeah, I it. think that's it, so. But it looks like they're, look, they're remodeling it. Wow, what a surprise, huh? Yeah. Shocker. Who would have ever thought of that? Yeah, who would have ever thought anyone would remodel something in the Hollywood oh Hills? Oh my God, no, because she moved out, whoever bought it. Who used to live there? Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore lived here, right. Because I would see her, and she would always say hi to me yeah. at the park. We're right near, uh, we're right near the park right here, the dog park. So we're on Kersan Terrace right here. Got this wonderful view. This is where the Beatles stayed in 66. Yes, August 24th. August. And they had a gig at uh, Dodger Stadium, which yeah. was actually their second last gig they ever played. San Francisco uh, Candlestick Park was uh, the next day after this. Yeah. They were here for three days. They hung out, they partied. You know, I, I mentioned Derek Taylor before, and Derek Taylor was also the Beach Boys publicist. And Paul and George went to his house in Laurel Canyon, which is right across the hill right here. And Brian Wilson and Carl Wilson came and hung out with the Beatles and, yeah. you know, got to know them. Uh, there's an old story about Paul McCartney going, I'm Paul McCartney, you're Brian Wilson, we've got that on our way, let's party. And uh, they did, but I guess they got comfortable enough after a couple hours where Brian Wilson had brought an acetate of good vibrations with him. And he played it for Paul and, and, and blew his mind, you know. And... Uh, Paul asked for the acetate to bring home with him, and, and Brian Wilson said, oh, it's not mixed to my liking, so he didn't give it to him, but, you know, uh, wow, huh? They really had kind of a friendly competition. They were. You know, they were born two days apart. Wow. That's, That's pretty amazing. wild, isn't it? Yeah. And they both played bass. They were both like musical brilliant genius. songwriters. Uh, yeah, musical geniuses, thank you. And they said that may possibly the Mamas and Papas 
Puppets came here to visit. When the Beatles came to town, the circus came to everybody town. Everybody wanted to see them. Everybody, everybody was wanted lining to see up them. to meet them. Exactly. So they played Dodger Stadium here. They were still doing a, like a 30 minute set with 11 songs or 12 songs in it. And I think they had about had it by the time they got here because uh, that's when they were like taking them away in an armored car. Yeah. And they could, their touring was coming to an end. It was just too grueling. Yeah, and I think the whole We're Bigger Than Jesus thing yeah. was going on at the time yeah. too. So anyways, this is it right here. This is it. And then, you know, Brian Wilson remembers it as the first time he met Paul was at uh, the studio uh, a year later. But, you know, I, I kind of trust uh, Derek Taylor's memory more than as much as I love him than Brian's uh, Brian Wilson's memory. Brian was having some uh, some issues back yes. then, so let's just put it that way. Yeah. I think you're great, Brian, but yeah. <laughs> we're on uh, Coldwater Canyon, and where we're going, we're going to go to um, a property owned by Paul McCartney right now. Right. That was formerly. And he bought this property from Courtney Love. And it was a wedding present for his wife, Heather Mills. And anyways, his house is right up here. Keep going, it's okay, park here. Right here. What is significant about this house, he had this house for a few years. Uh, when they got divorced, McCartney and Heather Mills, she insisted on getting this house. You know, Paul wasn't into that and it was because of George, right? What happened? Well, as we know, you know, George came to L.A. the last couple weeks of his life, and the news made it sound like he was going to get a place on Coldwater, right? Or that's the address that they gave. And then there was talk of uh, the Laurel Canyon address, Laurel Canyon by uh, Carpenter School, right? right? They were all decoys. They were all decoys. It was here. He, he decided to spend the last week of his life at Paul McCartney's, as a guest of Paul McCartney's house, which is really like, you know, those two guys had butted heads, you know, after... Apple dissolved and all that kind of stuff. But you know, Paul and George knew each other the longest in the Beatles. Yeah. Uh, uh, Paul knew George before he knew John, I believe. You and know, who invited George into the group? It was Paul, man. Let's, let's take a look before they call the cops on us. <laughs> There's the house back there. Oh. But you know what's weird, man? It's like, it's, especially the story about the, this, you know, with George you know, dying here at Paul's and everything. These guys, man, had their issues with each other after the Beatles, but they were like, they were tighter than brothers, man. They, they, they really, really were, they were really... Look, they were only those four that shared that experience in yeah. this whole world. Exactly, Something that man. no one else has ever experienced. Or probably... Never will. I don't no think it'll one ever happen will again, man. It, it was, was like... Uh, it was just a time, a point in time that nobody can do it. going to the Mama Cass house, right? Yes. Uh, which has some uh, has some history with uh, Ringo Starr, actually. So, all right, Randy, we are here. Well, this was where Mama Cass, where Cass Elliot lived after she left the house on Stanley Hills. She moved up here, and this was where the Laurel Canyon crowd. There's a picture of Eric Clapton. Yeah. And Joni Mitchell and David Crosby sitting on the lawn. I know Hendrix hung out here a lot, yeah, too. Hendrix and all Crosby, Stills, and Nash. This was when they were forming, yeah. so they were here a lot. It's purported that they played here for the first time. Yeah. You know, it, some people say it was Joni Mitchell's Sorry. kitchen. Other people say it was here. And there was just constant people coming over. And well, know. you described her as, a, as the den mother. I thought that was yeah. perfect. No, she was she kind was. of the den mother of the... No, she was the catalyst. She yeah. brought everybody together. This house was once either owned or rented by Ringo, Ringo. Starr. I think it was in 79. It was obviously after Mama Cass had it. And... Uh, and it burned, it burnt down. He lost a lot of Beatles memorabilia in it, I know. And I know after that, this house was owned by Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, Dan Aykroyd. And it's, and uh, uh, who was the, the actress that-, that Oh uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Beverly D'Angelo. Yes, Beverly D'Angelo that was in the- uh, uh, Yeah, in in vacation. The vacation. And, yeah, yeah, she owned it. And it was also, somebody told me that they thought it was haunted. It was Aykroyd, he talked about it, that, right. that stuff would happen in this house that was, very strange and uh, in the annals of rock and roll this is a really famous house 
like second possibly only to the uh, Frank Zappa log cabin, you know, yes. or the Joni Mitchell house is this one. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a weird Laurel Canyon Beatles connection that this place had. All right. All right, so all roads lead to uh, the Troubadour right here. And uh, this is actually the location of a couple really great Beatles episodes in uh, the Los Angeles Beatle playbook, if you will. And uh, Lennon was actually thrown out of here on two different occasions. One of them was, was the, the Smothers Brothers. Smothers Brothers. He was okay. tackling the Smothers Brothers. Yeah. And the manager had to ask him to leave. Yeah. And uh, he was drunk and he, there was a few swinging. Lost his glasses, started swinging. They threw him out, man. They, they, they 86 him, man. Yes. And uh, the next day, I, he felt really bad about it because he really ruined their show. He did. And, and he uh, sent them flowers. Yeah. And he he made up. He said he you know he's really felt bad about it yeah. when he thought about it because he was drunk and he said you know um, I'm only human. Yeah, yeah. And that's what was his response. He's not. He wasn't really only human. He's John Lennon. But, yes. Uh, the other <laughs> time he got kicked out of here was he showed up with a Kotex taped to his forehead, and he was drinking all night. He wasn't tipping the waitress. And the waitress, who was pretty hard-boiled, said, Hey, you know, are you going to tip me? And he goes, Do you know who I am? And she goes, Yeah, you're an asshole with a Kotex taped to your forehead. Right. So I, that was like the greatest rock That's and roll line, line ever. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the Troubadour, uh, we're going to wrap it up right now. This has been uh, The Beatles in Los Angeles. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. And... Uh, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to the channel and keep playing it and keep playing it loud. All right, man. Peace out.